This question is doing something very unusual for the SAT. It's blending different rules together that usually are kind of isolated and in their own questions. We can see from the answer choices, we're definitely messing with punctuation, right? We have just in choices B and D, we have either a comma comes or it goes, but we also are changing the verb tense itself, right? Where is intending versus intends, right? Those are different tenses, uh, different verb forms, I should say, and they are going to affect how the structure of the sentence works. So whenever we have this kind of like um, what I call the two and ing rule, we are thinking about punctuation. It, it, it could come up, it could matter. So uh, just that's kind of what's going on here. This is not verb tense about past, present, future. I can tell because it's not, they're all kind of in the present tense. It's also not verb tense about singulars and plurals because it's very obviously gonna be a singular, right? American abstract artist Richard Serra is intending, right? Like, it's fine, we can tell it's singular. So it's not about that. It's about this other verb tense rule, which I talk about in several lessons, um, but uh, basically this is what I call it, and it has to do with the structure of the sentence. So let's just see what we get looking at this. American abstract artist Richard Serra is intending his installations to make passersby keenly aware of how one's movements are affected by the physical features of one's environment, assembles large-scale steel plates into sculptures that dominate the outdoor spaces they occupy. Whoa, we got a problem. This is a comma. What is this doing here? Right? It's not a list, so it's not like we're getting to another thing. It's not like he intends something, he assembles something, and then something else. There's no list here. So... This is, the, this is the trap, you need to notice this, right? Is we could say American artist abstract, American abstract artist Richard Serra intends his installations to make passersby cleanly aware. We could say that, that's perfectly fine, but if we stop short and don't realize the sentence continues and then has this other weird break, we're gonna fall for the trap. And so that's it, choice D is the trap. What we need to do is recognize that this, this comment at the end is inserting an extra piece in our sentence. So our sentence is really picking up right here. So that picks up with a verb. And the verb assembles is a verb in the normal present tense, and that's the verb that goes with Richard, right? So American abstract artist Richard Serra, that's my sentence, assembles here. I'll read the whole thing. American abstract artist Richard Serra assembles large-scale steel plates into sculptures that dominate the outdoor spaces they occupy. That's the sentence. Now, the middle part here, where we're gonna put a comma to start the interruption, and then the comma to end it, is just descriptive. It's a long description. It's kind of a, you know, a manipulative description. It's trying to get you to kind of lose track of what the sentence is saying, but it forces us basically to certainly get rid of A and D, and then it has to be C because if that, in order for this to work, we need the verb to be in this ing form. We use the ing form in extra clauses very often. Usually it is just kind of ending a sentence or maybe introducing a sentence. And so it's that, that comma clause at the beginning or the end. But those extra dependent clauses can behave the same way if we insert them into the middle of the sentence. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, we are still describing what Richard is doing, but we're doing it in a way that kind of flips the order. So here's probably how I would have written the sentence to make it more easy to follow. Uh, I would have started with, with this part, right? Intending his installations to make passersby keenly aware of how one's movements are affected by the physical features of one's environment, American abstract artist Richard Serra assembles large-scale steel plates into sculptures that dominate the outdoor spaces they occupy. Right, notice that what I did is I still had an extra clause, I still had the same clause they had, but I put that first, and then my whole thing is just like, you know, one big block, right? So it's not it's not three parts, it becomes two parts because I bring the two twos together, right? So they come back together and exist as the sentence that they were intended to be. This is why with the SAT, we're very often gonna encounter sentences that you would not write if you were writing them in an essay because they're choppy, they're weird. Doesn't mean they're gramma grammatically incorrect, they're stylistically a little annoying, but they are grammatically fine to just do this, to have an interruption, as long as we show that interruption with two commas. So um, notice that if we did the same thing that I just did and kind of flipped the order with choice B, it would sound terrible, right? We couldn't really start the sentence with the word intends, because that is a, uh, a present tense verb that needs a subject. And we've lost it if we move it around or put it in, in, in some sort of interruption. So only ing verbs can really behave that way. 
it's tricky. Hopefully you can just hear that, but uh, notice what they're doing is they're trying to get you to stop short and not even notice that this sentence continues. So whenever they're messing with punctuation, you've always got to read the full sentence because that could completely change your answer.